remembering our baptism, remembering God's promise to be present as we gather in his name, we continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord, who is the rock of our salvation, invites his people to listen. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. We confess that we have not listened to the Lord. We have instead listened to what our itching ears want to hear, and have shut our ears to the truth of your word. The Lord invites his people to look, look to the rock from which you were hewn, to Abraham and Sarah. We confess that we have not always looked to the Lord for our provision, hope, and guidance. We have looked for and to other things of this world that have led us astray, through which our worship and prayers have faltered. The Lord invites his people to give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. We confess that we have become distracted in our earthly pilgrimage. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We read from God's prophet, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation, our Lord proclaims, but my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, the rock on whom our confession is made, our hope is built, and our eternal victory won. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. people of God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son Jesus to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ, and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to life eternal, all through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue to hear God's word. And we will continue to hear God's word. Our first reading from the Old Testament comes from the book of God's prophet Isaiah, chapter 51. 
Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people. Give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation is gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes this day from Romans chapter 11, going on into chapter 12. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments and how inscrutable His ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been His counselor, or who has given a gift to Him that He might be repaid? For from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the singing of the Alleluia verse. our verse from Ephesians 2. You are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel chosen for this day according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the...
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May that always be part of our prayer. Grant then, O God, your will be done. Just what the words we just sang. That when the church bells are ringing, many in saving faith may come where Christ his message is bringing. My know my own, my own know me. I was thinking about this right before the early service as well, just thinking about what a privilege it is and for Pastor the and myself at this time to be able to share and bring God's word to you on a, on a regular basis. Such a privilege and what a privilege is given to us all as God's people to share and live and proclaim and reflect the hope, the promise that is ours in Jesus' name. But we live in a world where many who call themselves Christians say, but I don't need church. I don't need to go to church in order to be a Christian, but to such people, we must be ready always to give answer, answer that points to their walk with Jesus and their need to be strengthened and encouraged in word and sacrament and in Christian fellowship. The fact of the matter is people left to themselves can get smothered, overwhelmed, conformed to, as we heard the writer of Romans, Paul write, to the things of the world and the troubles and trials of the world. And we need, we need our weekly reminders and booster shots of hearing and receiving God's grace and the assurance of forgiveness. In fact, we need that each and every day. Hence our encouragement to one another to spend time with the Lord and His Word each day. But we must tell them, it's not about you, it's about Jesus and our connection to Jesus and our connection to one another in Jesus. It's not a question of whether or not you need the church as someone who truly believes and trusts in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior we need to be able to tell them and assure them you are the church part of the body of all believers in Christ Jesus and as we read in our reading from Romans you have special gifts special talents special insights that if you withhold those if you keep those in a sense on the shelf the work of the church and the work of the ministry the body of Christ will suffer will be deficient because it's missing key parts that God has prepared and gifted to his church but sometimes our local version of the church gets in the funk we know God has given us a mission we know he's given us a purpose as his church as his people but sometimes our understanding of it gets in a funk gets into maybe a bad rut our our feelings got hurt and it was easier to just kind of pout and mope about it instead of regrouping and rekindling our effort and commitment to Jesus. When we think about it, of course we want to see people saved. Of course we want to see people transformed in God's grace. But we can get so set in our ways. Just like those Pharisees at the time that Jesus walked in this earth. Oh, we can be so critical of those Pharisees. But how often haven't we acted just like them? But this is the way we do things. Or I'm going to kind of sit back and wait and see what happens here. See what happens here. I'm going to kind of... And that's exactly what the Pharisees did. This is the way it is. And if you don't exactly fit exactly the way we understand this to be, well then... This Jesus guy, this, this, he's got to go. We can get so set in our ways. In my training to be an intentional interim pastor, one of the things they kind of drilled into our, into our head was the realization people have a way of always wanting to keep things exactly the way they are. They'll agree with you that certain things need to change in our culture, in our church, Certain things will have to be going different. They'll support your efforts to bring about this charge and this change, they told me. We, and and, they'll, and they'll, they'll agree with you, say, we want to reach out to our neighborhood with the gospel. We want to welcome and receive more young singles and couples into the fellowship of believers. We want to see more people in church and in Bible class. Great, great. Oh, yeah, we want to see those changes take place, take place, Pastor. We are so with you until something comes up during all that effort and all of a sudden there's a wall there wait, wait a second you're now asking me pastor to do something a little different to adjust to a different time or to step out of my comfort zone and to do something I've never done before you're wanting me to give up something or adjust something that I'm used to as part of my regular Sunday routine and schedule 
See, the picture is this. Oh, we're all for this change and everything else until it affects us. And if that has happened to you, if that in the smallest way has reflected something you've experienced at some point, don't be surprised by it. In fact, expect it. It's part of our sinful nature since the fall. We don't like to experience change. We're okay if others have to experience it, but we'd rather avoid it ourselves. If there needs to be change and everything for these things to happen that we all agree God wants to have happen, we want it to mean change for everybody else, but we want everything to stay just the same for us. Now what does stay the same is our Lord and His love for us and His grace and His mercy. His word of promise does not change. But in a changing environment, in a changing world around us, we at times have to realize that the most effective way to share the gospel 136 years ago when this congregation was started here in Lincoln that is possible, just possible, 136 years later, that way maybe wouldn't work quite, quite as well as what God is calling us to do now. His word doesn't change. His love for all people doesn't change. But how we're going to have to show it, how we're going to have to communicate it, may have to change. Because guess what? My guess is services were probably in German 136 years ago. I don't know if we have anybody here who remembers that time, but uh, um, not that I'm looking at any possible candidates out there either, okay? But a uh, few things change. People are speaking English or maybe Spanish or what is this they're telling us? There's about 90 languages spoken here in the Lincoln area now. And, well, but we used to do things, why even I remember 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever, you know, we just do this and we just put that out there and all these people would come. I don't know if you've noticed that a few things have changed. People don't just come flocking to church. Church, as we talked about last Sunday, just isn't the center of life and community and society like it used to be when I started out as a pastor, even just maybe not all that many years ago. It's almost kind of like we're, we're putting on this great big meal and we got all this food and everything else of God's grace and His mercy and His forgiveness. But there's a whole bunch of folks who are hungering, who are, are thirsty, who are desperately in need of what God has to offer them, and they're staying out there. But we're, te we're telling them, but it's here for you. Come on, folks, come here. But they're not coming here. So what do we need to do? find more and more ways to bring the food out to them where they're at. In a, in a small way, that's what we've been doing with the movie nights, isn't it? We know what God tells us in the Great Commission of Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. But how do we imply, apply and incorporate this purpose into our present time and location? Our appointed readings for this Sunday give us some clues, some insight. Isaiah 51, look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. The coastlands hope for me and my arm, the promised Messiah, they wait. That's who they wait for. My salvation will be forever. Consider and remember where we have come from. Consider our ancestors in the faith. They're examples of faithfulness in the face of so many trials and obstacles. Remember the selflessness of those who went before us 25 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, even 136 years ago. What sacrifices did they make so that we would have the option of a Christian preschool, an early childhood center, elementary school, a Lutheran Christian middle school and high school and a Christian university, Lutheran Christian University down at Seward, just what, 30 miles down the road. What could we learn from them as to our task and a purpose as to this time so that, so that today's generation and future generations to come would have the same opportunities here in the Lincoln area to hear of Jesus, study His Word, and to grow in the grace and knowledge of God our Savior? Or would it be possible that on our watch we would let all those things fall away? I hope you would join me in a sense and uh, a declaration saying, not 
on my watch, not on our watch. In Romans 12, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And in that sense, we are one body in Christ, individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Lives of sacrificing, serving God and one another as ones who already have the kingdom of God and His righteousness is God's gift and grace to us in Jesus. The picture is this. We too often, I think, are ones who... We, we don't know what you're talking about here. This, 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 present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Lord, you know, no, no, Lord, I, 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 I give, I set aside what... It, why, it's, it's, it's a little over two hours on Sunday morning that I set aside for church and a little bit of Sunday school and fellowship and, and of course there's the drive home and back and forth and stuff and and isn't that enough present your bodies your whole being your whole your whole time everything to the Lord that's our spiritual worship think about it what is ours that in a sense isn't to be dedicated to the Lord. What is ours that it's okay to kind of set it aside from our dedication to the Lord? I hope you're seeing with me and understanding with me nothing. We try to do that all the time, but our whole life, our whole being dedicated to the Lord. Not to be, so that we're not conformed to this world, but being transformed. And then we read, given gifts that are different, but gifts that, what do we read? Let us use them. Let us share Jesus in His Word. Let us see the power of God at work in lives around us. That's what was shared with the parents of the second graders at our school just this last Friday. They received, the second graders received their personal Bibles. What an awesome tradition that you have here at Trinity. Oh my goodness, I was stunned and it was such a privilege for me to be able to be a part of that this year. We encourage the parents, make God's word a part of your daily life. And they're encouraging their kids, make God's word a part of your daily life. Encourage and do all that you can to help God's word be a part of your parents' lives and your children's lives as well. And those second grade parents and grandparents said some amazing and profound things as they spoke a word of blessing and guidance to their children. I was in awe. It was such a privilege to be a part of that. We want to be daily transformed by the Word of God at work in our lives. We need to be daily transformed, but how will that happen if God's Word, the Bible, just sits on the shelf at home? How can our children, relatives, and friends be transformed in Christ if they never hear us speak of Jesus nor see the evidence of Jesus in our lives? We all have different gifts and ins insights that have a place of value in the ministry that we share. And when we keep those gifts back for whatever reason, for whatever excuse, then the work of the church will suffer. And I know we have had those, and my guess is some of you may know some of them, folks who have, have said, well, I'm, I'm kind of taking a wait and see thing here. I want to see if certain things happen or not. I want to see if, you know, you know, whatever it is, fill in the blank. But in the meantime, they're staying back. They're keep, keep, keeping their gifts and talents and insights and observations about what would help us be a better church, whatever it would be. They're keeping that to themselves. We're going to see if you can all figure it out. And then maybe, then maybe. We need to let them know as, as, as brothers, as sisters in Christ, as people who care. When you're doing that, you are setting yourselves up for the very thing that you're afraid is going to happen. I don't know if I'm saying this very well, but the point is this. We all have gifts and insight, and they're all to be used. What do we read? It doesn't say, let us consider using these gifts if everything else works out right and, they, you know, and things. No, it says, let us use them. Folks, there's nobody retired in the kingdom of God. Nobody. I've heard some people say, well, I'm kind of retired from this or that or whatever else. And 
Why? Well, I did it long enough. Who said so? Is there some time limit on our service to the Lord? Well, I can't do certain things that I used to be able to do. Well, I get that. <laughs> I can't do certain things I used to. I, can, I can't throw that fastball like I used to. You know, I, I played catch with my son. My shoulders kind of improved from the surgery and stuff. And, and uh, didn't even really, well, okay, once or twice I tried to throw the old uh, knuckleball. But I mean, it was, it was like, uh, you know, the 20 foot arch type of thing, okay? Yeah, I get that. There's certain things we just can't do anymore, but it doesn't mean that we withhold ourselves from the kingdom of God and the work of the kingdom. It just means we find and see other ways that we can serve. Matthew 16, Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We've heard, us, we've heard reference to that over the last two, three Sundays. That whole picture of when we are sharing God's word and proclaiming God's word, God is at work. And when God is claiming a soul through the work, as we're sharing God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit is at work, literally every time a soul comes to faith in Jesus Christ, it's like the walls of hell were broken down and another soul was taken out of Satan's grasp. And the angels we read in heaven rejoice. That's what is ours. God is the one who builds this church. But the building blocks and the instruments are his people of faith, people like you and me. As God's word is proclaimed as sacraments and minister, as people look to you and to me and to all Christians, see, are these things really so? Do you really believe this? They need to be able to see in our example and hear in our words, yes, we really believe this. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, our Lord and Savior. And when we mess up, and we will, and when we stumble, and we will, they need to also be able to see and hear us being able to say, hey, I'm not perfect either. I'm so sorry I kind of raised my voice the other day or whatever it might be. And they need to see it's okay for us to admit we're not perfect, but we are forgiven. And we know we are loved. And you can know that same forgiveness and you can know that same love. It's good to talk about then in that love about God's plan and purpose for us as his people because we can get so easily stuck in our own plans and our own ideas of how things should be and kind of comfortable in the way we think things should be. Kind of like those Pharisees of so many years ago. In a sense, all Christians do share the same message. We get that. Go make disciples of all nations. But our vision is our understanding of the specific ways that God is calling us as a church to lay down our lives for the community around us, our Jerusalem, our family, our neighborhood, our city, our country. Our vision is how we apply God's broad overarching mission for all his people to the specific gifts and needs and opportunities in this time and place that we share right here at Trinity right now. Part of this vision, of course, will always be centered in Jesus Christ and his great commission for his church, his people of faith. Sharing Jesus, we will see lives transformed. We see this time and time again in the Bible. Radical change when Jesus heals the demon-possessed man. He wants to follow Jesus now. This is somebody nobody even wanted to be around. They couldn't even hold him in place because he would break the chains and stuff. And now he is healed. He wants to follow Jesus. And Jesus says, no, go back to your home village and tell everyone what God has done. That's what I need you to do. We see radical change when, we're, when people are no longer a slave to sin, but now a child of God in Christ Jesus. That's what we've been talking about in our cottage group meetings. That's what we've been touching upon in sermons, in Bible classes, and in all these things. What is it that God is calling us to do? Churches are kind of like people. They're born, they grow up, and then they die. The difference is people only get one life to live. Churches can have multiple life cycles. The key is being focused on Jesus. As I've heard some of the history here at Trinity, I think you've had some different life cycles. I think one of them was clearly after a time of some turmoil and things this is several years ago, a certain pastor was called here. I recently had talked to somebody from the congregation he had been serving in 
Omaha before he came and oh they were so devastated how they couldn't believe that he had left taking this call to this Trinity down in Lincoln. I'm talking about Pastor Andov. Is that how that name is pronounced? There was, as you tell me, in a sense, a new life cycle that started at that time here in the history of Trinity. Sometimes it's a certain person, pastor with his gifts and abilities. Other times it's a certain refocus of look at our neighborhood, look at what we need to be doing, and a bunch of God's people getting together and saying, we have got to make this happen, and they do, and that's how a new life cycle begins. But however it happens, it's centered in Jesus. And it comes from reviewing and looking at what are we doing and, and are there things we can do more effectively. God's word doesn't change. The hope and promise that is ours in Jesus doesn't change. But other things sometimes do need to change if we're going to be effective in reaching out to a changing world, to a changing neighborhood. But whatever we do, even if it's something that involves that terrible, nasty word, change. Whatever we do, it has to be driven by love. God's great love for us reflected in our love, our care and compassion for the homeless, the addict, the lonely, the hurting, the scared, the people desperately wanting to again trust in God as their Lord and Savior. That was one of the powerful, powerful testimonies that we heard from one of the parents on Friday how their child was basically an evangelist for the Lord to help them once again know the love of Jesus. Lyle made a comment in Bible class that even if that's the only value that would have come out of our school in, in a 10 year period that this one person now is walking with Jesus saying that otherwise I'm not sure it would have been the case, that right there would be worth that ministry effort and we know thousands more others have been touched by that work in ministry. We see this in Jesus' words in John 15. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. As God has first loved us, we are called to love one another and to reach out to the world around us with the compassion of Christ. And where our Christian love is abundant and evident, we will have all the motivation we need to tackle the tough question, embrace the multitudes of opportunities around us to share God's love and proclaim the saving gospel of Jesus. There's a little bit of a chart that I want to show you here right now. And it's just kind of, it's the birth, the childhood, the adulthood, the maturity, retirement, death. You know, we see that kind of life cycle. We see a similar thing in churches as well. The key is you want to, before that death would take place, to have that opportunity and to embrace an opportunity for a new life cycle to begin. And again, it has to be centered in Christ. Trinity at this time, as we look at the next slide, Trinity at this time in its history is just like many other churches across the U.S. It's in time like many are of, in a place of, and I'm looking for that little orange thing to show up in there, there it is that kind of that time of maintenance or even kind of decline. We see this in churches all across the nation. But the key is churches don't have to stay in that spot. Yes, there's been a time of maintenance decline for a variety of reasons. And if we would continue in such a pattern, eventually it would lead to death and closure. And we've seen that happen in churches across the nation. But I know this is not what God has in mind for Trinity Lutheran. So our vision, our understanding of God's purpose for us as a church is important. Vision helps us understand a clear understanding of why a congregation exists. A clear and compelling picture where the congregation is heading. Convictions that have an outward focus. It's an organizing factor of the church's ministry. Why are we doing this? We're doing this to reach people, to reach souls. That's why we're doing that. That's why we have our school. That's why we have our early childhood. That's why we have the, the movie nights. That's a topic we talked about in our Connie's group meetings. It's what our transition team is going to be talking about when it makes its report to the congregation at the town hall meeting on October 8th. But again, take a look at this life cycle that we saw earlier. The key is for a Christian congregation 
for its ministry is that when it sees that it has lost some of its focus and some of its direction and it's just worried about maintaining what it has instead of reaching out to the lost kind of like I remember some conversations early when I came what do we need to do so we can so we don't you know lose people how about if we strive to be the kind of church and congregation doing the kind of thing that people want to be a part of see what I'm getting at that's something that's making a difference in our neighborhoods and in families the idea is that you get a new life cycle started. New life cycles can and do happen. They often coincide with major changes in leadership. They often react to changing demographics around the church or societal shifts. In fact, that's what I'm already seeing happening here at Trinity Lutheran. I'm excited about what I'm seeing with the new and renewed leadership that I see at our school and our early childhood center. Some of you know we're starting to have the administrative staff of both the school and church meeting on a weekly basis. Just started last week. I'm thrilled at the start of our TMAC meetings, kind of this the Trinity Ministry Action Council. People representing our various boards and ministry teams will be, and from our church and school, will be represented, communicating with one another, coordinating with one another in our efforts to do the work and ministry for which God has called, gifted, and placed us, placed us in this time and place here in the Lincoln area. I see this happening. I see though it is potentially a new life cycle already beginning. I heard one of the Sunday school teachers right before I came, came up here into the sanctuary or whatever, um, yeah, wanting that extra minute, but just shortly before that, one of the Sunday school teachers saying, if I understood her correctly, wow, I think I had more kids here today in my Sunday school class than I've had for, you know, what, when I, since I can remember. There are some things that are happening. When I first came, a lot of people told me about things that somebody ought to do something about. But they said, but I can't be that somebody. I'm too busy. I'm too. But somebody pastor ought to do that. And, you know, and us pastors, after we've been around, we know what that means. It means we expect you to do that. And if you haven't done that within six months, we're going to be really upset with you, pastor. But now, recently, and even the last couple of weeks, I've had people talk with me about an idea that they have and how they would like to see it happen. They're saying now, Pastor, I want to do this. Who do you think might be interested in helping me with this? Who do you think shares this thing? What advice can you give me to help this get started? And some of the things that, that are involved are these. These are just some things that all of these have been mentioned to be brought to me within probably, for sure, within the last nine, ten days. Visiting members, active and inactive. Reviving our Stephen ministry and getting a new team of leaders trained. Starting a young adult fellowship. Reviving our Sunday school efforts. Tackling our repair needs. Putting together a fall stewardship program. Putting together an effort to more quickly follow up on people who are interested in joining Trinity Lutheran. Putting together a community survey effort by which we can learn directly of some of the needs of our neighborhoods at our church, at our school site, in the neighborhoods of our members. And those are just a few things that quickly came to mind when I was writing this out. We're all about sharing Jesus. We are told in surveys that 91% of those who call themselves Christians here in the United States don't understand that the church exists to fulfill the Great, emission, great Commission. Most people go to church as consumers. Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have a certain program? Do you have this? And if you don't have this, well then I'm going to look elsewhere. And we have to help people reach them where they are and say, God hasn't called you just to be a consumer though we all need God's grace and mercy each and every day, but God has also called you and gifted you to be part of that ministry, to be part of that effort, to encourage one another and to reach out to the world around us. And so it comes down to, so what is our vision to be about? We gotta care for one another. I've heard that loudly proclaimed. That's an inward focus and it's important. But Others are saying, but we got to focus on reaching out to our community. We've got to reach out. And that's also important. I hope you're getting the sense in our Bible studies and in sermons and other things, we are called to be doing both. There's so much more we could talk about this. We are going to be talking about this more, especially as we hear the report at the town hall meeting. Look around us. We've got to look around us, see the needs, and say, Lord, what is it that you would have us do? But also look around us and the people that are here in church with us this day and people that we well, haven't seen so-and-so for a while. That's also part of our mission. To reach out to them and 
How are you doing? I care. Jesus cares. What can we do to be of help? This will propel us into a time of new life as we learn and again relearn and again relearn to love our community, our fellowship, our family in Christ the same way that Jesus does. New vision for a new future. Our purpose centered in Christ and his great commission. We need local missionaries and where Jesus leads us, where he has need of us, we will follow. And sharing Jesus, we will see lives transformed all around us, beginning with our own. In Jesus' name, amen. May that peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to all eternity. This time I invite you to stand and to join me in the confession of our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe. Congregation may be seated. We're going to have our mission moment, and Randy's going to be sharing with us uh, one of the ways uh, that we can serve our Lord. Though I have this fear he has some corny joke to start us off with, but that may not be the case. <laughs> Morning, I'm Randy Porchy. I'm going to start you off with a mission minute riddle. What did the two termites say when they walked into the saloon? They said, is the bartender here? I didn't get it either when I first heard it, so don't feel bad. Now I'm here today to talk about the gathering place and Trinity's um, ministry with the gathering place. Uh, what the gathering place is, it's an old house over here on 15th and E that was transformed into basically a soup kitchen. And what they do is they serve an evening meal five nights a week, starting at five o'clock, to anyone who wants to come in and have supper. Uh, they serve at five o'clock the first meal, they serve five thirty seconds, and then if anyone needs a take-home box, they serve a take-home box. What Trinity's involvement is in the ministry is that we have five different groups that serve during the year. Each group prepares their own menu, prepares the meal, takes it over to the gathering place, and then serves it. And then afterwards there's a small cleanup. But it's a very rewarding experience, so if anyone is interested in being part of that, just contact me or co contact Jolene in the office and we'll get you set up with one of the groups. Uh, if that's something that you don't feel you can do, there's also a gathering place fund set up. So if you would like to make a donation, it helps pay the cost when we buy the food. Uh, just talk to Jolene in the office. So remember what Jesus said. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And when the people asked, well, when did we do this for you? He replied, when you do it for the least of my brethren, you do it for me. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Randy. Thanks for sharing that. Um, one of the things I've been discovering in these few months that I've been with you, there are so many things happening in work and ministry behind the scenes that we don't readily realize are happening and being done by some of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, that's part of why these mission minutes are happening as well, to help us understand these things are happening 
and there are ways we can be a part of that as well. Our worship continues as we gather our tithes and offerings to the glory of God. Pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, from you and through you and to you are all things. You have built your church on the confession of the gospel and have promised that the gates of hell will not overcome it. To your church throughout the world, together and united as one body, grant the faith and courage to confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Wherever the church is under attack, O Lord, protect and defend her against the assaults of the evil one, even to the gates of hell. Wherever people are oppressed or denied their dignity, O Lord, raise up leaders to order society in peace and justice. May all the rulers of the earth acknowledge your authority in gratitude and praise. And wherever your people are straying from your word and will, O Lord, and where people seek what their tickling ears want to hear instead of the truth of your holy word, arm your servants with your mighty gospel and cause them again to confess you as the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, open our eyes to see the gifts you provide to all your people of faith. Open our eyes to see all people as ones for whom Jesus died. Whenever we fail to use the gifts you have placed within us, O Lord, turn our hearts toward repentance and open our eyes to see the gracious opportunities for service that you provide within the body of Christ. Whenever we allow the distractions of this world to blind us to your power and glory, O Lord, remind us again of the depth of your riches, wisdom, and knowledge. Call us again to listen and look and pay attention that we may seek you where you and salvation will be found. Wherever people are in mourning or ill health, without food or shelter or in any other distress, O Lord, visit, relieve, support, and uplift them in your mercy. Fulfill your purpose for them. We remember before you especially those near and dear to us. We think of all who are on our prayer list and all those that we name in our hearts. O Lord, hear our prayer, rock of our salvation. We pray, Lord, that you would grant strength and healing according to your gracious will for all these that we pray for and, and for those we name before you in our hearts, on our prayer list and wherever. Lord, we pray also that you would be with those who have special days and celebration days. We think of those with birthdays and anniversaries. Lord, help them to always celebrate most of all the amazing eternal blessings and promises that are ours in Jesus. Lord, we pray that you be with those who are affected by Hurricane Harvey and the continuing rains and the terrible flooding already taking place and which looks like it's going to only get worse. Lord, we pray you be with these people. And Lord, we pray that you be with us and, and, and all your people of faith that as you have gifted us and as you have enabled us, we can be part of the answer and the, the help and the resources that are going to be des desperately needed to help uh, people rebuild their lives. We pray, Lord, that you continue to be with our Sunday school here in the ongoing work of, of uh, you know, reaching and, and, and improving and, and expanding our educational opportunities for your children of all ages. We pray, Lord, that um, you be with those entering the ministry. We pray for uh, Reverend Santi as uh, someone we know from uh, his, when he was a member here when they first came to the United States from Spain. We pray, Lord, that you be with him as he is going to be ordained to the Holy Ministry um, this afternoon and uh, to be with his wife, Alejandra, uh, as she is commissioned as a deaconess. We pray, Lord, also that you be with those who are retiring um, and, and, and retiring from, the, uh, from, from being a pastor uh, as they continue to find ever new ways to serve you. I think especially of my brother-in-law, David Berquist, who's uh, ha in undergoing his retirement service, his last service uh, today, even as we speak. Lord, all these different things, the ongoing work of the leadership and members and friends of, of Trinity as we take to heart uh, the needs we see around you and how to apply that to the calling you have given to us all to go make disciples and all these things Lord 
We place them all into your hands, asking for your guidance. Gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, look upon you with his favor, and give you peace. Amen. Dear people of God, go in peace as you serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.